Welcome to the Full Arch Secrets Podcast, the podcast where we will share and discuss strategies to help you dominate your dental implant market and grow your production beyond your wildest dreams. We're on a mission here to help as many practices grow and to help change as many patient lives through dental implant treatment as we possibly can. So we'd love your help in getting the word out there by commenting, liking, subscribing, and sharing this podcast. Today, we are so excited to dive in to this full arch framework. We introduced the idea of the full arch framework to you in the last episode of this series. And today we're going to dive in even further and get more in the details and in the weeds of one of the specific aspects that holds up this framework. So if you remember from last episode, we talked about the three pillars that make up the full arch framework, and they are the authority architecture, the marketing architecture, and then finally your closing architecture. Within your authority architecture, this is the very first pillar. So one of the first things that we need to focus on, one of the first things that we need to develop and uh, strengthen within our practice is going to be the creation of a unique value proposition. And today, myself, I'm Kevin and Spencer, we are here to help you dive in to a proven strategy for how to create and how to promote and how to get awareness out there around your unique value proposition. Spencer has actually helped hundreds of businesses craft a unique value proposition. And so I'm honored to have you here with me today, Spencer, to talk about this because it's definitely something that you have had a lot of experience in. You've seen it work time and time again. And this is kind of a, a proven method for how to create a unique value proposition. So we're going to bounce back and forth off of each other, but Spencer, I'm going to turn some time over to you to, to lead us into the importance of a unique value proposition. What is it and how can I use it in my practice to help me attract and close more full arch patients? Yeah, thanks, Kevin. And I just want to start off with frequently, frequently we have doctors come to us and who are even putting in big budgets into their marketing and have some pretty good systems down and then wonder why they're not getting as many starts as they would like. Even if they have a good team, a good closing team, they've got the good closing architecture, they've got a good marketing architecture in place, but they're still not just crushing it out there in the marketplace. And typically we could go back into their marketplace and find somebody in their marketplace who is doing a lot of great authority architecture. They have a really good reason. Uh, they're putting out into the marketplace a really great reason to choose them over anybody else. And they are getting the majority of the low-hanging fruit. And so these doctors have to work harder to get that. Now, uh, to, to pick up cases, and if you have a solid, unique value proposition, then you are giving that patient a reason to choose you over someone else. And they will feel like they are missing out if they go somewhere else. And that's what it's all about. That's why we have on here the secret sauce on our screen. Uh, for those of you who can't see this, uh, that's what it's saying right now. It's the secret sauce. So uh, let's dive into this. What is a unique value proposition? Uh, well, simply put, it's what sets you apart. It's why someone should choose you over your competition. And it increases your value perception. And what isn't it? doesn't have to actually be unique. And that's something that a lot of business owners and practice owners get hung up on is they'll come to us and say, well, I don't have anything that stands out for my competition. We all do the same stuff. You know, we're all good doctors. We all treat our patients well. And that's all they can, you know, they typically can come up with is like, hey, I'm a good dentist. Come to me. We'll take really good care. We care about you more than they care about you, you know, which doesn't fly very far. So Kind of like uh, a, here's a he said, she said. Yeah. So here's the thing. Your unique value proposition doesn't actually have to be unique. It just has to sound unique. And we're going to show you how to accomplish that. So a little setup as we go into that, though, is, is the psychological understanding of what this is doing. So uh, what a unique value proposition does. So services are intangibles. It is this ethereal thing out there in the ether of a promise of something that's going to happen in the future. And it's really hard for people, human beings to wrap their head around a, a promise of something that's going to happen in the future. 
we are used to walking into a store, trying on clothing, making sure it fits, picking up some fruit, seeing if it's right. And you can't pick up a service and know that the money you're committing is going to get you exactly what you want. Because it's this promise of something in the future. It's hard for us to wrap our brains around that. And a unique value proposition helps what we call in the marketing world, helps productize the service. It turns a service into a product. And we do that by using a couple of things. One is a name, like a solid name. And for like a protocol or a service, if you give it a unique name, then all of a sudden that becomes more of value. Like it increases the value proposition on that. It increases its ability to look like a product when you list out the features and exactly what's going to happen, maybe the steps You make it so it's not this thing out there that's just like, hey, you're just going to wake up one day with a new smile. Here's how you're going to get that unique smile. Our process is called X, and this is what happens. Here's the process. You're defining it, right? All of those types of things help productize it and help increase the value perception. That's what I'm trying to say a minute ago. So here we go. Types of UVPs. There are main two, two of them. Factual claims and naming or your process or protocol. So factual claims, now this is on where you can just say, hey, I've placed 2,000 implants and that has some bearing on it. Or for example, I know there are some doctors out there that train other doctors. And that might be something like come to the doctor that trains other doctors on how to place implants, right? Uh, That's a substantive claim. I just happened to talk to a dentist yesterday who said, I have a surprising amount of patients who come to me to fix the work of other doctors. And so Hmm. in his case, his unique value proposition is I'm the one who fixes, I'm the cleanup crew. Like I, I'm the one they turn to and that they come to when they feel like all other hope is lost. You know, they might not have come to me first, but they're going to come to me last and they're going to stay with me. And I'm, I'm going to be the person that saved the case. Now that would be interesting. I wonder how that would fare in the market to make that claim. That would be an interesting, hey, I'm always open for trying, you know, the scientific method. We're always open to testing it and seeing, but it would be interesting maybe to say something like that, like the doctor that fixes other doctors botched up work. <laughs> in, in a way that could be divisive, you know, if they're referral partners or good relationships with other other doctors in the market, then you might be, rock the boat a little bit. A little but bit rock funny. the boat, yeah. But you could see, though, that um, having a substantive claim, I know of doctors who've said, like, you know, in, in placing implants for X amount of years or, you know, making people smile for this number of years, all the experience, when you can quantify that experience, that's really, really strong, more than just, like, we've been doing this for a long time. It's, you know, we've helped countless people. Like, putting a number on it uh, really helps. So the second one here, uh, and this is where more doctors are going to benefit. And actually, you can combine the two uh, together to strengthen your unique value proposition. But uh, the second one is the easiest, and it's naming your process or protocol. And so I'm going to tell you a couple quick stories. Schlitz beer back in the 1920s had a... They were like number eight in the nation in beer sales. And they hired this marketer. And back then they didn't have social media or TV or whatever, you know, to to promote. And so this was writing. This was like showing up in newspapers and magazines. And so this guy was putting out ads where he would write these articles on Schlitz beer. And to start off, he went and asked them, he said, okay, well, tell me your process. What makes you unique? And they said, well, Nothing makes us unique, but what we do is we take purified water and we, you know, start there and and then they explain the process and he said, okay, okay, okay. So does everybody else use purified water? And they said, yes. He said, but nobody talks about it. And they said, no. And so he said, we're going to talk about that. So he went in and created these ad campaigns that talked about how when you get Schlitz beer, you get the most purified you know, water out there, it's made with the freshest and purified water, whatever. And Schlitz beer jumped up and became the number one selling beer brand for, I can't remember how many years for like almost a decade. 
So this kind of goes of back that. to your prior your prior point, Spencer, was that it doesn't necessarily have to be unique. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it does not have to be unique. All that the other exactly beer companies it. were using purified water. And yep. it was just Schlitz was the only one that was expressly stating it out there. It probably also caused questions in the mind of the customers or the public that they were advertising to, like, oh, well, does does Budweiser? Uh, uh-huh. You know, did, did the rest of these use purified because they're not saying they're not telling me that they're using it. So maybe they're not. And that probably also right. helped boost Schlitz up the rankings. Yeah. Remember when we talked about productizing your service? They simply named it. They said it out loud. This is what we do. And by saying it, it made it seem like nobody else did it. And so it's like, oh, well. If I come here, then I get purified. You know, I get beer made with purified water. If I go there, I don't. Even though actually you did, but people just didn't understand the other people's processes and they weren't describing it. Got it. And, okay. And if Schlitz had gone a step further and named their process, you know, the Schlitz pure whatever process, it would have even strengthened it. You know, and that's what we're going to talk about here in a second. One other quick story, healthy home inspection. So I had this client back in the day up in the Northeast, up in the Northeast, it rains a lot and they build homes on stilts a lot. So they have these like crawl spaces under their homes. And as you can imagine, crawl space under your home, you probably get mice and you get, uh, you know, spiders and stuff like that. They also mm-hmm. get bats in the attic. And so there's a bunch of companies up there that will come and clean out your crawl space in your attic and make sure you don't have rodents or pests, right? And so when I worked with them, I was the marketer in this case, and I was asking them, okay, tell me about your process. What do you do? And they say, well, we start with a free consultation. And, and I said, okay, what does your competition do? Well, they start with a free consultation. That's what everybody markets is this free consultation. And so we said, you know, as we were working with them, I said, well, we went a step further and we said, well, who buys? Who's typically the buyer? We found out it was women, kind of like in healthcare, women make more of those decisions. And when it comes to health in general, women want their homes to be healthy. And so they are the ones who reach out to make sure that crawl space is clean. And hmm. so I said, okay, if we know it's women and that their primary motive is to have a healthy home, I said, why don't we change the name of your free consultation and make it a healthy home inspection. Well, now you're the only company that offers a healthy home inspection and we want to step Everybody else is we, doing consultations. You're doing a healthy home inspection. Yeah. And we listed kind of like a 109 point car inspection. We went through and said, here's all the different things that we're going to inspect for that you get with your healthy home inspection. Right. And, and so we labeled that all out and they, they just started killing it. And it was like, I can't remember, we said it was like worth 300 something dollars or 297 or something like that. And if they signed up now, you know, they'd come out and do the inspection for free. And they just got a ton of people signing up doing that. And it it really went well, but it changed the perception of this thing that was going to happen. And suddenly they had a unique value proposition that nobody else had. They had a, a healthy home inspection. Right. And it was a tangible thing. It made it very, it felt like a product to the people because they could see, oh, we're going to check all these different things. We're going to check for roads. We're going to check this. We're going to check that. Boom, 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 boom. Right. And it really, really strengthened their position in the marketplace and helped them grow uh, and take market share. So, and it was, it was probably the same types of things that all the rest of the home inspection companies were doing 100%. In, as part of their process. Right. Everybody's checking Nothing for roads. Everybody's unique. checking for, Right. Except yeah. it had a name and it played on the emotion of the the ideal customer and the decision maker in that in that situation is going to be this um this housewife, if you will, and really, really dialed in specifically for that person. How would a dentist use this in their full arch practice, Spence? Yeah. So you could imagine if you're Dr. Patel and you go through and say, okay, what are all the things that I do? And it might be exactly the same things that every other doctor in your area does, but you go through and you kind of outline that and you call it like the Patel protocol. When you come here, you know, you get the Patel smile. 
And we follow this Patel protocol. And it's our 17 step process that provides a beautiful smell for a new you. You imagine something like that, right? So here's what you do. You go and you create, or to create your UVP, go list out your skill set and experience. Find out if there's anything quantitative, like we talked about before, and factual claims, and lay those out there, because that can be part of it. The Patel, you know, when you come to XYZ Dental, you get the Patel, uh, we're going to use the Patel protocol. Um, Dr. Patel has been doing this for X amount of years. He's placed X amount of implants, and he uses his unique Patel protocol to provide you the most beautiful smile and a new you, right? You might want to list out the materials you use. This could all be part of this Patel protocol. Again, productizing, you're, you're naming it. It's that purified water. It's this, you get that. We're going to do this for you, you know? And you describe it and explain it. And suddenly it looks and feels, wow, I'm getting a lot of value when I come to Dr. Patel, right? Sure. List out what you do prior to and post-surgery. There might be, and if you're looking at the screen here, I'll just read some of these real quick. Pre-surgery instructions, a handout post-surgery or uh, post-surgery instructions, anesthesia call before, maybe a doctor call before or after, uh, the day after, what to expect instructions, swag bag, recipes, gift cards to soup and smoothie places, two-week post-op, one-month post-op and temp adjustment, whatever. There's a lot. And you could go through and you could list these out as bullet points and describe them, explain it and say, this is all part of it, right? And the Patel protocol includes all of this wonderful stuff that's going to ensure you get the most beautiful smile and are, and are very well taken care of. So once you have that list, you, you've gone through and you've labeled that all out, you give it a name. And then uh, you can also go another step further. If you have a care package, swag bag, name it maybe the perfect pamper care kit, right? When you come here, not only do we uh, care about your health and want to make you heal faster, but we know this is an opportunity for a, a beautiful new smile, a new you, and it's a time to pamper yourself. And so we've thrown in some gift cards to some smoothie shops, some, there's a day spa down the road, the gift card to them, whatever. And this all comes as in your perfect pamper care kit. You see what I'm, yeah, I'm doing that. there? Uh, name, if you have a guarantee, name it. Many doctors have some sort of three or five or some odd year length guarantee, and you can put a, a name on that, the Sure Smile Guarantee. You know, we want to make sure your smile is taken care of and that these implants last you a lifetime. And that's why we have our Sure Smile Guarantee, et cetera. Right. So, last step, last step. Now you've figured out what your protocol, your, your, program is, you've given it a name, and you've given all your other things that make you unique. And now it's time to incorporate that and get this message out and broadcast it. You want to amplify this in your marketing. So if you're doing any marketing online or you know direct mail or anything like that, incorporate that into there. Because the more you amplify this unique message out into the marketplace, the more people will view you as unique and give them a reason to choose you. And instead of looking vanilla, like all the other dentists out there doing the same thing, suddenly you are unique. And if they go anywhere else and, and you'll find when you start doing this, you'll find that people will come to you. Maybe they can't afford it right now, six months from now, 12 months from now, when they are ready, they're calling you because they can't get the Patel protocol anywhere else. Right. So get yeah, it out I, there. I imagine Spencer, I can see like, well, I have to go to the place that has a 17 point inspection or that has the, the 17 point uh, safe smile method that you, mm -hmm. that you just referred to. Um, mm -hmm. There's a brand awareness. There starts to be association. You start to see a billboard and a mailer, and then you see a Facebook ad, you see a TV commercial and everywhere mm -hmm. it's this consistent message. And finally, when that person picks up the phone to give you a call, so-and-so at the front desk answers the phone and says, thanks for calling XYZ Dental, home of the Patel mm -hmm. protocol. And it's just a consistent message that lives in every, every piece of promotion that you're putting out there, including how you're talking. Yes, yes. And that's where I think it fails a lot. Sometimes people take it and they will amplify it into their marketing, but then they forget to emphasize that again when 
the person's, when their front office person's doing that appointment setting, they should bring that up again and say, oh, I'm so glad you found us. Or, you know, answer the phone even like with that, right? Or I'm so glad you found us. Dr. Patel has been doing this for, you know, has placed X amount of implants. He has such great experience and he even has his own protocol he uses that's helped so many people change their lives. It's an amazing protocol. It's called the Patel Protocol. And it comes with X, Y, Z, right? Boom, boom, boom. Go down the list. And then all of a sudden that person's like, oh, wow, I'm not calling somebody else. I'm going to go there for sure. The treatment coordinator too. Make sure that's worked into your appointment setter script and your treatment coordinator script. And maybe even put it up on the wall. Uh, you know, So when somebody comes in and they're meeting with you, they can see that. Um, it's emphasized right there. So amplify that message. And really, that's it. It doesn't have to take a lot. You can sit down in an hour, put this whole thing together, make sure it's it's pushed out everywhere. And it, what seemed really difficult or like you had to like go and figure out, you know, you always had to be unique though. It doesn't have to be that way. Just list it out, give it your own name. <laughs> it's the easiest thing. And suddenly uh, you're off to the races with this. So, all right. That's all I've got, Kev. That's all I've got. Well, I think that you've dropped quite a few nuggets on us. This has been a really actionable episode. I think anybody listening can take from this one or two things. And like you said, within an hour, they can develop their own unique value proposition. If you're working with Dental Implant Machine, please get with us, share with us what you believe your unique value proposition is. We'd love to incorporate that into the message that we're putting out into the marketplace for you. And then work with your team on how they're incorporating that into the scripting. If you're not working with dental implant machine, this is something that we do with our clients every day. And we have a framework for how to go through this process with a, a few worksheets and we can help you with that. So if, uh, if anything here was interesting and you want to reach out, Spencer, myself, we're all here to help. And we just want to see more patients be able to access the life changing care that you clinicians are are known for and a lot of you already have some of this authority architecture in place it just has not been productized and amplified out into the marketplace like it like it should be so we love helping people do that to get the word out there and we want to keep changing more lives so thanks so much spencer for uh, your wisdom and for your experience specifically with creating unique value proposition yeah Till next time, guys. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.